から農作物の地元のやつはあのーまあ、買わない、いただかない、<笑>うん、食べないという、えー、主義に今、しております。なるべくね、あのー、内部被爆を避けた方がよろしいのかなと思いまして日本では要するに危険な場所に原発を建てないということは一度もやったことがないんです今年の農作物はまず諦めてや来年の4月から。もう一回やり直すな、いずからずまで。南相馬で起こっていることは、本当の悲劇と、私の考えでは、政府の、あるいは行政のミスリードによって、えー、生じたおかしな悲劇、これが二つ一緒になってるんですね。放射線っていうのは怖くてね、この DNA、みんなのこの体にできてる DNA に、ピューって刺さります。そうすると、それがプチンって切れちゃうわかる放射線とか。Hello.、Uh, welcome to the press conference at the、uh, Foreign Correspondent School of Japan. Uh, my name is、uh, Teddy Jimbo.、Uh, I'm a co chair of the committee that's organizing、uh, the press event,、uh, including this one. And I'm, uh, I'm uh, your moderator today. And uh, uh, our speakers today are、uh, my father, right, is、uh, Mr. Masahiko Yamada.、Uh, many of、uh, us might know him as a former agricultural minister. Uh, under the、uh, DPJ government, and he's now working as a lawyer. And also, another speaker、uh, on my immediate right is、uh, Mr. Koji Iwatsuki. He's also a lawyer. And、uh, the two gentlemen here represent a, a 1063、uh, plaintiffs who sued the Japanese government on May 15th. Claiming that the TPP, the Trans Pacific Partnership, is unconstitutional and thus claiming injunction of the ongoing negotiation.、Uh, and uh, uh, they're here to explain why they are doing this, why they are so against this uh, uh, TPP uh, treaty. And uh, uh, Today,、uh, we'll have a statement both from、uh, Mr. Yamada and Iwatsuki, both、um, uh, kind of short o n e And、uh, then Mr. Iwatsuki is going to explain、uh, the content of the lawsuit. And, and then、uh, we'll have a QA.、Uh, and uh, we have till four、uh, uh, o'clock. So、uh, I'd like to get as many questions as possible. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we have. Uh, uh, Our usual、uh, interpreter,、uh, Mr.、Uh, Tamako Takamatsu, as always. And uh, uh, there'll be an、uh, interpretation by Mr. Mr., Mr.、Uh, uh, Ms. Takamatsu. So、uh, let's start with uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Yamada first, then now we move on. Uh, and uh, uh, just before going into the uh, conference, uh, Please、uh, be reminded that、uh, your cell phone is、uh, switched off or in a, put in mana mode so that they will not be disturbed.、Uh, and uh, if, it's, uh, if you guys are ready,、uh, let's, let's begin. 
So, Mr. Yamada, please. So, I'd like to begin by giving you some background information as to why we uh, launched this uh, lawsuit, uh, why we uh, want uh, this uh, TPP to be declared unconstitutional, and why we want to put a stop to the negotiations. Uh, the TPP negotiations have been in the news for some time now. Uh, it has been about five years ago uh, that uh, Japan declared its intention to consider uh, joining the negotiations. Uh, at the time, um, I was serving as uh, the, uh, minister, the agricultural uh, ministry, as was explained earlier there. And I realized at, from the very beginning that this was a very, very a huge matter, uh, not only affecting the agricultural sector for which I was responsible and not only affecting uh, other parts of the economy, but uh, much, much more wide encompassing because after after all, it covers some 21 sectors. As a result, I had the idea from the very beginning that this would uh, be a very serious problem, and I gathered together about 250 Diet members, parliamentarians, uh, and we organized a, 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 a meeting, uh, excuse me, an organization, uh, which was to consider carefully uh, the merits and demerits of the TPP. Uh, as a result, our organization uh, had uh, government officials come to speak to us uh, some 144 times. Uh, uh, they came once a week. Um, but because, as you know, uh, the negotiations are confidential, uh, they would not produce uh, documents. Uh, there was very little that they could actually touch upon. And so uh, even though uh, so many years have, have passed, uh, it, it is even uh, for Diet members very, very difficult to understand what exactly is being asked of Japan in the TPP negotiations. Uh, this confidentiality uh, uh, has continued to this present day. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, confidential uh, negotiation has been taking place for many years now, and I am quite concerned about the fact that uh, if uh, things uh, continue uh, the way that they are, uh, and uh, a general agreement uh, is um, arrived upon or a fundamental uh, signing takes place, then uh, the changes that can be brought to the entire nation, to the daily lives of the people, could be enormous. Uh, and I believe, therefore, that this uh, negotiation, which is uh, going to so drastically, uh, if it is passed, uh, alter our, our everyday lives and maybe the very shape of our nation uh, goes against uh, the uh, Article 21 of the Constitution, which guarantees the right of the people to know access to information. Therefore, three years ago, I approached uh, the gentleman to my left, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Iwats uh, Mr. Iwasaki, and at Iwatsuki and asked him for advice. Hi, Tokoroga. However, um, I was told uh, by Mr. Watsuki that because Japan does not have a system where uh, there is a, a, co a court that specializes in constitutional matters, it might be very, very difficult to try to find legal ways to stop the negotiations or to alter the negotiations. Uh, so for many years, we were stymied. But about a year ago, uh, there were many, many developments uh, in the uh, judicial system in Japan. Uh, in other words, many cases came to court which uh, talked about, which was uh, based around the constitutionality uh, or unconstitutionality of various issues. For example, the dispatching of troops to Iraq would be one example. As a result, uh, since uh, the courts did seem uh, more willing uh, and there seemed to be a trend uh, for courts to handle matters that had to do with constitutionality, we thought this might be an opportunity. So for the past year, about 10 lawyers have come together and we have conducted um, periodic study groups on this matter. As I mentioned, we started off with only 10 uh, lawyers. However, we did overnight uh, study sessions, and our numbers ballooned to uh, a final figure of 157 lawyers. There are 157 in our group. Uh, also, uh, we put together enough people to uh, actually file uh, the uh, lawsuit, and uh, the plaintiffs numbered 1,063, as was mentioned earlier. And so on May 15th, uh, last month, we did file with the Tokyo District Court uh, this petition or complaint uh, about uh, the TPP negotiations. So the uh, actual complaint that was uh, filed or the petition that was filed with the Tokyo District Court uh, has been distributed to you. It's very, very long. Uh, it reflects the fact that uh, there were so many different opinions, even among the different lawyers and among the different plaintiffs. And so we took all of these um, ideas into account. And it is really the uh, final work of Mr. Yuatsuki uh, sitting next to me who took all of the different uh, disparate um, ideas and put them into one long complaint or petition. The in regard to the actual contents of the uh, suit, I, I would like to turn the uh, mic over to my colleague. I would like to speak very, very briefly about the contents of this petition. 
uh, to put it very succinctly, uh, we felt very strongly that we had to file uh, this suit, or we had to file this petition or complaint, because uh, the TPP uh, w was something that we regarded as uh, something that would infringe uh, the basic human rights, uh, the right to live and uh, the right to conduct a wholesome cultured life as guaranteed in the Japanese constitution of the Japanese people. In, in other words, it would infringe upon our, these rights. Uh, we believe that uh, what is guaranteed in the uh, constitution, uh, the guarantee of fundamental human rights, the TPP goes against this. Although the TPP is often referred to as a trade agreement, uh, what it truly is, is uh, an agreement that will allow global companies to uh, protect or guarantee its freedom and its uh, ability to make profits. Uh, in order to achieve this, it will uh, uh, be an agreement that will basically eliminate or abolish uh, almost all of the obstacles uh, in various countries, which uh, all are categorized as non-tariff uh, barriers. As you know, international treaties have precedents. Uh, they are uh, more important than uh, domestic laws. Uh, they have a higher standing. Therefore, if uh, Japan assigns the TPP, then uh, all of the domestic laws that currently exist uh, will all have to be um, either abolished or rewritten so that uh, the fundamental tenet of the TPP, which is to guarantee uh, that global corporations are able to maintain their freedom and, uh, they, and uh, guarantee their um, ability to make profits, uh, is really Realized. I don't think uh, it's any news to you that uh, quite often when we are talking about the interests of uh, a global organization and the uh, fundamental human rights of the average person, quite often these two um, concepts clash. Uh, as a result, uh, we believe that uh, with the TPP, uh, it is very, very likely that uh, the fundamental human rights, uh, which have been guaranteed in the Constitution, will be infringed upon, and uh, the fundamental uh, protection of uh, fundamental human rights uh, will be transformed. Uh, the second point that I would like to point out to you is that uh, the TPP would uh, completely alter the fundamental um, structure uh, by which uh, the nation is governed, uh, which, of course, this, uh, uh, this governing mechanism or government structure uh, is um, established by the Constitution. Uh, the TPP is so far uh, reaching and so all encompassing that it would basically uh, completely alter uh, domestic policies and uh, domestic laws. Uh, in fact, I could even refer to the TPP as not a trade agreement, but as a system of laws. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, once the TPP is adopted, uh, the Diet would uh, have the, be burdened with a tremendous task of taking a huge number of laws and revising them to fit the TPP. Not only this, in the future, if a law is, uh, a bill is considered but goes against uh, the principles of the TPP, uh, the uh, Diet would be forbidden to pass or enact such a law. Uh, the fact uh, that all of this would come about uh, because the cabinet signed a single international treaty, uh, we believe, is very, very uh, serious indeed. In fact, um, Article 41 of the Constitution uh, guarantees that the Diet uh, will be the highest uh, organ of state power and it will be the only or sole lawmaking organ of the state. But this uh, treaty would go against uh, this article. And not only this, uh, because of the uh, confidentiality of the negotiations, uh, although we already understand that a tremendous number of laws will have to be revised or perhaps abolished, we do not yet know exactly what work needs to be won, which laws are going to be directly affected. Uh, there is another uh, aspect uh, that uh, causes us great concern, and uh, this again uh, goes, uh, this is called the ISD uh, clause, which is the Investor State Dispute Settlement uh, System. Uh, and uh, this again is something that will very much shake the foundations of the governing mechanism uh, which was established by the Constitution and which, under which uh, Japan is uh, run today. The ISD uh, clause is a very, very special clause. It will allow a foreign investor uh, to basically take the government of Japan to court, uh, not in Japan, but in a court of its own choosing in another country. However, we believe that this goes against um, Article uh, 76, uh, Paragraph 1 of the Constitution. Uh, this uh, paragraph says, uh, the whole judicial power of the state is vested in the Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as are established by law. We believe that by taking the ISD uh, a clause, uh, this would violate the Constitution. There is another uh, problem, again, uh, which uh, uh, would, again, uh, affect uh, the uh, governing mechanism or governing uh, uh, structure of uh, Japan. 
This goes back uh, to uh, what I said earlier about uh, the uh, very uh, extraordinary nature of the TPP negotiations, which means that everything is conducted under greatest uh, secrecy. Uh, it is all negotiations are considered highly confidential. Uh, the fact is, uh, although the TPP is something that will tremendously affect the everyday lives of uh, the average citizen, even diet members uh, have, do not have access uh, to the information. Uh, Article 73, um, there is a proviso to item three of Article 73 in the Constitution which says that uh, the authority to approve uh, conclusions of a treaty uh, is given to the Diet so that uh, the nation can be put under democratic control. Uh, this secrecy uh, of the negotiations goes against uh, this um, Article 73. So I've given you some serious examples of how uh, the uh, TPP uh, would uh, violate or infringe upon the fundamental human rights that are guaranteed in the Constitution of Japan. As a result, we cannot allow this, uh, continue, this negotiation to continue. I'm sure all of you uh, know, it goes without saying, that uh, the highest value uh, that uh, is placed on human life in the Constitution. However, uh, the TPP negotiations, uh, TPP agreement, would very much uh, put uh, into danger or at risk uh, the lives and the uh, health of the people of Japan. As you know, Article 13 of the Constitution uh, guarantees that all uh, citizens uh, have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thoroughly. Article 25 of the Constitution uh, guarantees uh, what is called the right to life uh, of uh, the people, and that means uh, they are guaranteed the right to a minimum standard of living uh, that has uh, wholesomeness and culture. Based on uh, these fundamental basic principles in the Constitution, uh, many, many uh, other laws uh, over time have been enacted in Japan that guarantees uh, these uh, fundamental rights. Uh, these laws uh, are, make more specific uh, stipulations about the rights uh, of, of the people of Japan, and the TPP would infringe upon all of these laws as well. For example, the right of the people to uh, be guaranteed a stable food supply. Uh, the right of people uh, in the agricultural sector to, if they choose, uh, make a living uh, through uh, farming or through dairy farming. If the people to uh, have a, a, a safe food supply. Uh, the right of the people to uh, receive appropriate medical care. And again, comprehensively, uh, the fundamental right to life, uh, which is guaranteed in the Constitution, would be infringed upon by the TPP. <laughs> In spite of the fact, uh, as I've explained, uh, in, spite of the, in spite of the fact that so many fundamental uh, rights, uh, the fundamental human rights, the right to life itself, uh, which have been guaranteed in the Constitution and various laws will be infringed upon, in spite of this, the government continues to pursue a hasty uh, resolution to the TPP negotiations. Uh, as we are faced with a tremendous uh, negative um, uh, impact as a result of this uh, passing of, or the agreeing ratification of the uh, TPP, we turned to the courts because it is a judicial system uh, that is the last bastion uh, uh, that will guarantee uh, the uh, uh, rights uh, that are uh, listed in the Constitution. We are turning to them uh, to declare the TPP negotiations unconstitutional and uh, to stop uh, the negotiations immediately. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much, and gentlemen. Uh, so let's go to uh, Q and A. Uh, and uh, as usual, please uh, come up uh, to the microphone and uh, uh, cite your affiliation and name first. And uh, please limit uh, to your questions, not the speech. And let's start with the uh, working press, uh, regular member, working press. Uh, Anyone? Uh, ambassador? Uh, okay, hold on. Th there's no one from a regular member huh, who wants to ask questions. Okay, go ahead. My name is Khalil Hassan. I'm Ambassador of Bahrain. Thank you very much for coming and explaining the T TPP today. Bahrain. Bahrain. You see, I think our challenge is that we live in a global world, but our laws are local. And this is a big challenge. That's why the huge companies are winning, because they know how to use the law. But at the same time, we don't have a governmental global law. Globalization has advantage, but has disadvantage. 
つまりグローバル化にはプラスとマイナスがあるつまり本当にそのエアコンはおかしくないと思います。I think, I think
In other words, um, as you can see from our petition or our complaint, uh, what we are doing uh, in what we are asking for is uh, to have uh, the TPP uh, negotiation uh, considered to be unconstitutional. And as a result, uh, we uh, want the uh, TPP uh, treaty to be considered invalid uh, in Japan. And as a result, we would ask for compensation for our uh, plaintiffs. So our fundamental uh, strategy and our um, hope uh, and our goal is to uh, stand from the point of view of the average person, uh, the citizens of Japan, and say to the government that uh, the TPP must be renegotiated so that uh, the fundamental human rights guaranteed by the constitutions are not infringed upon. Uh, in other words, uh, what we are talking about now is uh, an international treaty uh, basically uh, coming into effect that would dramatically uh, affect and change and transform the daily lives of, of the people. That is the uh, flow of events uh, that we are seeing uh, occurring today. However, we believe that a reverse flow can also be imagined. In other words, uh, the people would uh, stand up and demand that their fundamental uh, human rights be uh, respected and um, guaranteed, and as a result, uh, the flow would go backwards and the international framework, the treaty itself, would be altered to reflect that. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, this is a very, very extraordinary uh, a suit. Uh, there is no precedent. As a result, we have absolutely no idea when a verdict might be uh, uh, given, handed down by uh, the court. Uh, but regardless of uh, how the TPP and negotiations progress or do not progress, we have no intention uh, but to keep uh, continuing with our suit. Uh, you were raising your hand first. Yeah. I'm from Echo News. Um, I have some questions about uh, the uh, location and timing of your uh, suit. Uh, you filed with the Tokyo District Court. However, your plaintiffs uh, probably come from all over Japan. Why did you choose the Tokyo District Court to file your uh, petition? And secondly, in regard to timing, um, this has a little bit to do with the previous um, question, uh, but uh, it is said that uh, the TPP is close to being um, agreed upon. Uh, you could have had filed this petition earlier, uh, and there's another uh, aspect as well. You could have filed it later uh, because so much of the negotiations is secret. You don't know the contents. Uh, it might have been one option to see what the contents were and then pile up evidence and then have a stronger case to present to the court. Why did you choose to file now? And secondly, uh, there would be some people that, uh, that would say that because the negotiations are secret and the uh, contents are not known, then uh, how can you possibly uh, file a suit that says that something is unconstitutional when you don't even know what the contents actually are. How would you respond? Uh, Begin with the later uh, questions first. Although uh, uh, it is a confidential uh, negotiation, uh, there have been some parts of uh, the uh, negotiations that have been uh, leaked uh, uh, via WikiLeaks and which have also been translated into Japanese. Just looking at the parts that have been uh, leaked and translated into Japanese, one can uh, judge uh, immediately that uh, there will be some fundamental rights that will be um, uh, violated. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, right of uh, citizens to be able to receive appropriate medical treatment. Yeah. And in regard to the ISD, uh, the investor state dispute uh, clause that I mentioned earlier, uh, there have been the specific cases that have already been discussed about uh, this matter from um, different parts of the world. And so uh, it is very, very easy to um, predict how uh, the rights of the uh, people will be violated as a result of this clause. Uh, timing, uh, timing. Location, 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 location. 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 Uh, I'd, like to reason, I'd like to talk more about the timing. Uh, I believe that this is fundamentally uh, the kind of problem that should have been uh, solved by politicians. But in spite of the fact that uh, Diet members uh, did not have any access to information about this very, very important and, and far-reaching treaty, in spite of this fact, uh, very few Diet members uh, showed any kind of discontent. You know that. So uh, the people are, uh, sovereignty lies with the people, and uh, the representatives of the people are the Diet members, but the Diet members did not respond to try to protect uh, the people's rights. So uh, we felt that there was no choice but for the people uh, to stand up directly and file uh, this suit. That's uh, why we decided to file now. Uh, when we look at how uh, various uh, matters of this nature are treated in Japan, uh, it is that uh, 
once all the facts are in place or have been uh, disclosed and one knows the contents of everything, then you file a suit. But we felt that that would be too late for something uh, as important and crucial as this TPP. That is why we decided to, to file now. I'd like to uh, talk about the location question. Uh, in uh, the uh, large number of plaintiffs that we have uh, filing this complaint, there are eight current active um, diet members. In the United States, uh, Congress uh, persons are able to uh, look at the documents. Uh, there are something like, there's about 2,000 pages of documents. Uh, however, they're, they're not allowed to take notes or anything, so they just have to look at it and try to remember it, and that's an almost impossible task. Having said this, however, um, Japanese and diet members are not even allowed to look at these documents. Uh, so considering that uh, the diet itself is located in Tokyo, we felt that it was symbolic to file this first lawsuit in the Tokyo District Court. Having said this, however, I have mentioned earlier that this is a local uh, issue uh, and affecting people throughout the nation, so that I believe that uh, in succession we will have many, many other uh, lawsuits filed uh, from uh, Hokkaido up in the north all the way to Okinawa in the south. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Okay. Associate member, um, I have two questions. Uh, first of all, it has to do with the ISD uh, clause that you mentioned earlier. I've heard that uh, this is uh, the topic of uh, considerable debate uh, in Europe. Uh, however, I don't think I've ever even seen this mentioned in Japanese newspapers and magazines. Why do you think this is so? And secondly, uh, I understand that you filed this uh, lawsuit, and in Japan, uh, the district courts tend to take these matters quite seriously and give a favorable verdict. But the pattern, as you all know is that as it goes through the system and goes to higher courts as it is appealed, then uh, eventually the Supreme Court will uh, strike it down saying that this is not a matter for the judicial system, but uh, it is a political matter that should be dealt by the government. Uh, so what, knowing that this is the system that pretty much exists in Japan, and what do you think is the significance of filing such a suit? I'd like to first of all respond to your first question about uh, why there is so little mention in the media about ISD uh, clause in Japan. And it's not just the media. Uh, if you talk to 10 lawyers, uh, you would be fortunate if you found one who had any knowledge of this um, matter. And I suppose you could say that it's because in part uh, the, because the media does not uh, pick up on this uh, story. Um, I can only respond by uh, making appeal to the media, please, uh, this ISD clause it will have a tremendous impact uh, on uh, Japan, uh, Japanese domestic policy. Therefore, please, members of the media, uh, write about it or investigate more about it. And then you also asked about uh, why uh, what we expected to get in the future, gain in the future, by fighting in the courts. Of course, uh, the system that you've described about Japanese courts, the district courts making one decision and it being overturned in the higher courts, we understand the system, of course, very well. Uh, this. But uh, when we uh, wanted uh, to make an appeal uh, from uh, the point of view of the average citizen, at uh, present we could think of no other venue or no other place or no other organization or system uh, in which we could make this appeal except the judicial system. Uh. Uh, we believe and uh, we strongly hope uh, that uh, the uh, courts will, uh, is a place, the courts uh, are a place uh, where uh, matters are dealt with in a very logical and um, based on facts uh, approach. And um, I think I touched upon this briefly earlier, but uh, I think this is the first lawsuit of its kind, a suit uh, that uh, talks about uh, the constitutionality of a trade agreement. And because this is such a unique uh, suit, uh, we hope that this will be uh, an opportunity for us uh, to gain more attention uh, from uh, people throughout the world. Because this is uh, the kinds of problems that I've described earlier apply not only to Japan, but to people throughout uh, the world. Uh, if this uh, lawsuit uh, serves as an impetus for us to be able to link hands with uh, like-minded people in other nations, so that would be something that we would very strongly desire. You we, of course, uh, know firsthand how difficult uh, the situation uh, is in terms of the judicial system in Japan. However, we strongly at the same time believe, fundamentally believe, and hope that if one p continues to pursue uh, something that they truly believe in and continues to keep trying, then eventually that will lead to a greater wave that will eventually transform the situation. Okay, uh, we are almost running out of time, but I guess uh, we can just quiz you one more question. Uh, is there anyone who hasn't asked a question? Okay, I think uh, you'll be the one. 
Hello, Nicola Smith, uh, strategist for CSA. Doesn't it trouble you that you're making life extraordinarily hard for the, uh, the common man? Doesn't, doesn't it seem a problem that uh, Japanese food prices are at abs, uh, astronomical levels already, with the price of rice protected by a 755% import tariff, and that the prices are, are likely to go up, bearing in mind that the uh, percentage of farmers who are over the age of 70 is, is already 50%. So it's, it's already going to have rising uh, labour costs. So you're going to drive up the prices for people. And as it is at the moment, because of uh, incompetence, uh, government moves in the 1960s, you have a uh, calorific self-sufficiency rate of only 40% at the moment. So surely the best thing to do would be to uh, open up the market to international competition and let the poor um, struggling um, housewife get cheaper food from overseas when they can do this more efficiently. Okay. Uh, so um, I certainly understand what you were saying, and um, I think many Japanese, average Japanese, uh, uh, share uh, your uh, understanding of high food prices. However, in terms of rice tariffs, um, there are uh, many, uh, there's a, a certain amount, uh, a large amount of rice uh, that is uh, imported free uh, of taxes. So the um, actual rate of um, tariffs is something closer to 200 uh, percent. And if we look at different, different data provided by OECD uh, nations, we see that the actual um, our food prices uh, are actually uh, quite lower than, for example, countries such as the United States and Australia. They are coming down. But certainly I do agree with what you, uh, you have said earlier about incompetent government policies in the past. Uh, and that has been one of the main reasons that why the uh, agricultural population has grown so old in recent years. Uh, when I myself served as uh, the agricultural minister, um, I uh, incorporated uh, new policies uh, that uh, mimicked the ones uh, that were in place in the United States and Europe. In other words, to give um, household, a guaranteed household income uh, to uh, different farming households. In other words, instead of using uh, different uh, intermediaries, uh, we, pay, we paid these, um, this income directly to the farmers. And as a result, over one year, the average income of uh, farming households rose 17%. And as a result, this uh, allowed many young people to enter and, or return to the farming agricultural business. In other words, uh, based on my own experiences, um, I believe that um, everything depends on uh, agricultural uh, policy. Uh, if agricultural policy in Japan uh, is handled wisely, then we will be able to have uh, food self-sufficiency, uh, higher food self-sufficiency, and food supplies that are safe and give peace of mind. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, uh, we're just running out of time. So uh, uh, it's going to end the uh, press conference. And again, I'd uh, like to give a big thank you for, uh, uh, to Mr. Yamada and Mr. Uh, Iwatsuki. Please uh, uh, give, give big hands. で、
を解いて見えたから、放射能なんて下がるわけないでしょう。単語除染しました。空間線量上がりました。全然下がってないですよ。取り除いてねえのそうでしょう。原発が爆発した当時と環境はもう2年経っても何にも変わってないんだから農業,の農業資材だって汚染されてれば起伏資材などは使用してダメだっていう指示が出てますそれも農家が何べくれるあれなんてわからないですよで新しく買い直ししてどうしてくれんの農家の思いっていうのをよく考えてみてください私たちは作物を生産して安心安全なものを自分でも食べて消費者の方にも販売してそういう収穫の喜びが今はないんです価格が福島県のものは県外のものに比べたら本当に値段も安いですからそれを承知しながら作って損害賠償をもらって。農家は何の活力がありますか。あと一つ言っておくことがあるんですけれども、福島県は農作物は出荷の前に全部検査しないと出荷できません。今は百ベクレル以下っていうことになってますけれども。農家が生産している私は守りますよ、これが何百くれるあるって。放射能、要は100百くれる以下だったら出荷できるわけですから、私は食べませんよ。買って食べる人は、放射能、メイド持って買って食ってるって、どうなの俺らは分かってんだよ。罪の意識なの作ってなくて自分は食わねえけど人の人に食わせてんのどう思いますかちょっと答えてくださいじゃ関連してちょっと待って関連して今は深川地区のね農業の話をしましたもう一つ相馬の玉の地区というところの話をしますそれを含めて答えて<笑>あの玉の地区っていうのは相馬市の西部にあって飯舘地区とほとんど放射能の濃度は変わらない高いんですよ山の中に入ると毎日70マイクロシーベルトいう土地ばっかりなんですよ女性はしています、部分的に。だけど、畑の作物の収入の賠償金が、米の農家と違って賠償されないという例がいっぱいあるんですで。しかも、住民の状況は、そういう状況で生活していても、自主的な地域です。生活に対する保障も不十分、精神に対する被害保障も不十分。二重の苦しみであるそういう地域が線引きによる救済から全く漏れていっぱい残っているこういうことをもう一度あの国も東電も含めてその線引きから漏れた人たちの実例がいっぱいあるこういう訴えは決してあの漏らさないできちっと把握して救済していただきたいそれとこの先ほどもおっしゃったけれどもただ自分の子供にね例えば100ベクルない食べ物であって50ベクルとかあるいは
簡易な検出費は10年ぐらいぐらいからしたら不検出になるんですよ、まあ、安いやつはねそんな高い性能のいいやつはなかなかそれがないアルファカキ専門ベータ専門ガンマ専門全部測れるなんてのはなかなか高くて手に入らないガンマ専だけですよセシウムの普通は測るのはでそれで測って不検出なんていうものを消費者が本当に知って食べるから食べないんですよそういう打ち合わせが分かってるからであなたも、ね、西田さんもおっしゃる私が聞きたいそれから文科省のあなたにも聞きたいが自分の子供に例えば10ベクレルだからこれスペース100ベクレルよりもはるかに低いんだから OK だよと言われてそれを進んで食べさせたいと思いますか食べたいと自分でも思いますか医者なら食べるんですか私はそれで食べるああ犠牲的な精神でとてもいっぱいでも子供には食べさせないんですよでそれが実態ですよ西田さんは私と同じか、まあ、私と似たような年上だからもうしょうがねえや役目から死んで見せようとあるかもしれないが自分の子供にはそれ食わせたいと思わないでしょ放射能ってのはそういうもんですよ指導さんののんきにそこにかまか座って見せているけれども自分の子供には食わせたいそこで済ませたいとは思わないでしょこれがね国家がきちっとやんなきゃなんない本当の問題なんですよそれをね、それを今の中間心臓追放だか、なんかで書いていない、それをきちっとやらない、最低基準だと国は命令してにもかかわらず、当然はそれを手当を取らない、それを大の場でこうやって見て、見て、聞いて、知っているにもかかわらず、権限を持っているね、規制権限を持っている国が、それに対してね、一言も言わない、こんな情けないことがどこにあるか。私はね、先ほど皆さんの人格誇りというふうに申し上げた私は同じ人間だから皆様のことはね同じ思いで敬服をいたしますよ人間としてだけどさっきの誤りの話にもあったけれども人間としてあなた方ね相当大きく自分の職業で自分の地位を守ることはそれは必要かもしれないがやっちゃいけないところまで踏み込んでるんです誇りはどこに行ったんだくない素直にそういう思いはね皆さん持ってると思いますよあなたもそうでしょ小さな子供はまだ独身かもしれないだからこれから子供を持ちますよその子供になるべく保護者の方から遠ざけたいと思うんでしょそれをその自分の素直な思いを国政に反映させられないそんな情けない国家公民がどうやるかどの命を危険にさらすんだったら自分のその覚悟を持てよ経産省の方にもですね、実はその福島県さんのお米の直売会みたいなのがですね、ございまして、えー、そういったものについてもですね、あの私、はこれ個人的な話でございますけども、あの買ってですね、あの家の家族とも一緒に食べたりしているところでございます。まあ、こういった形で、あの福島県の農家の方々の風評がですね、まあ、少しでも回復すればですね、これはやはり、えー、そうした形に持っていくべきというふうに思っておりますので、えー、我々としては、そうしたやはり安全なものは安全、やはり本当に危険なものは危険なものとしてですね、きちんと対処していかない。安全なものは安全という形で,です、ね、これは不評の解消に努めるということをです、ね、国としても、えー、努力してまいりたいと思います。これはあの単に賠償だけの問題ではなくて、えー、農業政策の観点からです、ね、そうした不評の解消というのは、これはまた農水省の方でございますけど、彼らもまた努力しているところでございますので、えー、やはり国としましては、えー、何回も申し上げますけれども、そうした不評解消に向けた努力という形で,です、ねえー、福島県農家の皆さんの活動をです、ね、サポートしていきたいと思います。はい、あ、風評、風評について、皆さん。はい、じゃあ、終わり。風評、風評って言うけどね。風評じゃないんですよ。いいですか。風評ってのは、根も葉もないもんなの。根にも葉にもあんの。わかる。物からってないからいいじゃないんだって。農家は、農地汚染されて、何千ベクルって、私は測ってます。全部あるんですよ。それ持ってってくれよ。そういうんだったら。風評被害って言うんだったら、全部持ってってくれ。え、物からってないからいいんじゃないんだよ。わかるよね。いつも言ってるよね、藤堂さん。それもわかる。それで賠償。
償されてるって言ってるでしょ、賠償されないのあるんだって、西田さんに何か言ってるじゃないですか、されないんです、今も止まってるやついっぱいあるんです、リンゴの賠償出ないんです、福島市の農家で、指導してますか、指導さんに指導してよ、ちゃんとやってよ、それ、言ってんだけど、全然進んでないでしょ、そういうもの。We need to get to subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.